Everyone, thanks for joining us on your MTN statewide news this Wednesday. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, Montana reports 50 new confirmed COVID-19 cases today, including 15 cases in Yellowstone County. Gallatin County reports eight new ones and Cascade and Ravalli counties each report four. Now this brings our state's total of confirmed cases to more than 1000 total tests so far more than 93,000. Governor Steve Bullock says he's not ready to close up businesses, but Montanans need to do their part to prevent it. So I certainly hope we don't take steps backwards, at least statewide. Um, you look at Bighorn County as an example, put in more restrictive requirements than what I've done at the state of Montana. And I encourage local communities to exercise that when it's appropriate. Uh, I don't want to go back, take steps back, but that's not dependent on me. It's dependent on two things, one of which the virus, and second of which how we as Montanans act and react. Um, I think with the cases that we're seeing and the spread, like I'm not looking at a phase three certainly yet, we'll just continue to monitor both what the disease is doing and how Montanans are acting. Now Bullock also says he wants to see students return to the classroom in August and that he will work with school administrators to map out guidelines for elementary, high school and college so all students get some in class teaching time. Well, Vice President Mike Pence travels to Arizona today to discuss the state's coronavirus response. Yesterday, the United States reported nearly 45,000 new cases. That's the second highest total since the pandemic began. Chris Martinez reports. Texans waited on long lines in Houston to get tested for COVID-19. It was about a three hour wait and they ran out of tests. Houston area ICUs are at 93% capacity. Statewide hospitalizations are up 332% since Memorial Day. Doctors want to get the numbers back down. My frustration is that we did it. Why do we take everything for granted? The U.S. reported nearly 45,000 new cases Tuesday. Almost half came from three states, Texas, Florida, and here in California. Testifying at a Senate hearing, Dr. Anthony Fauci warned it could get much worse if action isn't taken. I would not be surprised if we go up to 100,000 a day. Health experts say following the guidelines work. We know what works. We got to get everybody to wear masks. Um, we've got to really think about indoor gatherings and whether we can afford them. I think largely we can't. No bars, uh, no nightclubs, no gyms. Some seem to be getting the message. We've just decided to stay home for the weekend. Um, we might be on the more conservative side of, of how people are thinking about it, but we just don't want to be out. At least 18 states have now either paused or rolled back reopenings due to the coronavirus. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. And California's governor is expected to announce new restrictions this afternoon. Well, right now it looks lovely out there. Rob Griggs is in for Ed today to tell us if it's going to stay that way. Well, it's going to be a perfect day for those celebrating birthdays. And mm. happy birthday, Miss Janelle. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, it's nice to be able to incorporate that when we have some good news. So that's what we'll do. My birthday is in January, and it's, it's never good news in January, so... <laughs> <laughs> right now around the state, we got a few showers and thunderstorms showing up there in northwest Montana and just to the west of Butte there across the mountains. Temperatures in the 60s and 70s warming up steadily. The wind is really going to be the main feature of passing thunderstorms today, already kicking up from the uh, high line there along the front range. 38 mile an hour gusts at Cut Bank, all the way down to 43 mile an hour gusts at Great Falls and 40 mile an hour gusts at Livingston, even traveling out toward Yellowstone Park. So we're going to keep an eye on that, give you the complete statewide storm tracker forecast in just a moment, you know. All right, thanks so much, Rob. Well, Republican gubernatorial candidate Greg Gianforte, who made millions on the 2012 sale of a software company he co-founded in Bozeman, released 10 years worth of his income tax returns this morning. Gianforte says the disclosure sets an example of the openness and transparency he'll bring to state government if he's elected this fall. The tax form shows that Gianforte and his wife Susan reported $184 million in adjusted gross income for the 10 years ending in 2018. 18. On that income, they paid about $30 million of income taxes, $23 million in federal taxes, and about $7 million, million in Montana state income tax. A huge chunk of that income, almost $138 million, came in the form of capital gains. Now that includes almost $100 million of income in 2012 when the company they 
founded Right Now Technologies, was sold to Oracle Corporation for $1.8 billion. The Gianfortes reported they also gave about $41 million to charitable groups and causes, including their Family Foundation, which has handed out about $70 million in grants since its inception. Gene Forte, Montana's current U.S. congressman, is running against Democrat Mike Cooney for governor. Well, the campaign also released taxes for Gene Forte's running mate, Great Falls attorney Kristen Juris. Well, authorities in northwestern Montana are releasing new information about the murder-suicide investigation that left four people dead in Olney. Flathead County Sheriff Brian Hino says 42-year-old Emily Moeller, 41-year-old Cody Nevins, and 3-year-old Piper Barge are believed to have been stabbed to death by 39-year-old Cameron Barge. Cameron Barge was found deceased about a half mile away from the home from a self-inflicted inflicted gunshot wound. He was the ex-husband of Emily Moeller. A seven-year-old whose name will not be released at this time was able to escape the scene and run to a neighbor's home. Sheriff Hino tells MTN News they're treating this case as a triple homicide suicide. Multiple law enforcement agencies are still investigating the scene. Well, police are searching for a suspect in an overnight shooting that happened to top the building's rims. According to a tweet from the Billings Police Department, a young girl arrived at the hospital with a non-life-threatening gunshot wound just after 1 o'clock this morning. Police say a gun was fired during an argument between two groups. Billings Police Lieutenant Brandon Woolley tells Q2 today that he doesn't think the shooting was random and the victim and the shooter had some sort of prior association. No suspects have been taken into custody. Well, in Darby, Montana, the head high school football coach will be suspended for a year after posting Black Lives Matter protesters should, quote, be strung up and hung like the old days. The school board decided against firing Jeff Snavely, even though a petition calling for the coach to lose his job gained more than 7,000 signatures. Multiple football players from the University of Montana and Montana State publicly expressed frustration that Snavely kept his position. In addition to the suspension, the coach will have to complete a racial sensitivity training course. Well, despite coronavirus cases surging, some airlines are keeping plans to cut back on safety guidelines. Starting today, American Airlines says it will drop its effort to keep half of all middle seats empty. Meanwhile, United Airlines never made this promise. As state scale back on reopening efforts. It has top health officials criticizing the airlines for the neglect to social distance. A spokesperson for American says customers will have the option of changing their ticket if they're uncomfortable having a full flight. Now, despite the Senate passed an unexpected, the Senate passed an unexpected extension to the Paycheck Protection Program last night. Just hours before the program was set to end, lawmakers unanimously decided to keep it open until August 8th. This would extend the deadline for when forgivable loan applications can be submitted. The legislation now goes to the House for a vote. Still ahead on the new news, pets and fireworks are not a good mix. We'll hear the tale about how to help your four-legged friends. Well, the time now is 12.08, but first, Rob Griggs is in next with your statewide weather forecast. Here's your Storm Tracker weather forecast with Rob Griggs. Well, good afternoon. As the Beverly Hillbillies might have said, we have a heap and helping of sunshine out here in central and eastern Montana, even western Montana, with the exception of some high clouds in the northwest and west central Montana, some showers and a couple of thunderstorms developing, moving just up toward the Great Falls area and through uh, Helena. And uh, that's going to be the continuing situation here this afternoon as all of that moves uh, off toward the east. Now, we do have a marginal risk across much of central Montana for strong to severe thunderstorms. You know the drill. We could see brief heavy rain, strong gusts winds and damaging hail with a severe thunderstorm looks like right now for the most part because it's a very high elevated base of those thunderclouds wind is really going to be the common denominator gusts up to 50 to 60 miles an hour with the potential for uh, hail and some brief heavy rain but wind will probably be the signature move here today as we see this one cold front press through now that uh, upper level low that's stationed over Canada look at that it's not moving anywhere it's just staying right there and bringing in more and more of this weather the good news is it's going to start arcing up toward the north a little bit allowing a day of dry drier warm air to move in. However, by Friday afternoon and Friday evening, once again, another marginal risk of strong to severe thunderstorms from central
patrol out toward eastern Montana and into the upper plains of uh, North Dakota. And we also have a couple of troughs that will be moving through the area that will be agitating that weather somewhat. But again, Wind today will be the common denominator for a lot of the thunderstorms that roll through. And then, of course, as temperatures cool down a little bit, so do all of the thunderstorms. Here's what we're looking for today. Once again, that uh, patch across most of central Montana from the northeast down to the southwest. Strong to severe thunderstorms, just a marginal risk for those to occur. Otherwise, I would call them garden variety thunderstorms occurring here and there. And we're looking for temperatures to be into the 60s and 70s with a few 80s popping up out here across the plains where there'll be more sunshine. Uh, so so therefore will be more heating opportunity for us here later on this afternoon. Warland, Wyoming will reach up to 81 degrees, but Lewistown will sit right at 70. And then you get out toward Helena and Butte where you're in the mid to upper 60s. Tonight, that uh, chance of strong to severe thunderstorms goes away. We see the clouds start to clear out and then we'll have pretty much clear skies later on. And that would explain that 33 degree overnight low for places like West Yellowstone. Skies get clear, all the radiational heat whoop, up through the atmosphere. And there you have it, 33, 38 overnight for Dillon, 36 for for Butte. Then we have a smattering of 40s and 50s. I don't think we've got any 60s tonight. So uh, actually a little bit cooler than average in some places. Tomorrow, again, by afternoon time uh, into the evening, we'll see this chance for uh, marginal risk for strong to severe thunderstorms reaching across the state. That's probably going to happen, well, a little bit later on in the afternoon and evening hours. In the meantime, uh, tomorrow afternoon, highs will peak out into the 80s out here across the plains. Uh, almost 90 degrees for Warland and Wyoming. We warm up to 73 for Butte, 78 for Bozeman, 74 for Great Falls. Kalispell and Cutbank both sitting in at 68 degrees. Let's take a quick look right now at what our three-day forecasts look like as we look at Great Falls and Kalispell and Missoula and Helena. You notice a pretty decent chance for some showers and thunderstorms today. Highs mostly in the 60s. Then we have that little batch of drier, warmer air move in tomorrow. Definitely feel that for uh, all locations as we move into the uh, 70s, although Kalispell will be close to 70, still several degrees warmer uh, than it will be today. Here's the three-day forecast for Butte, Glendive, Bozeman, and Billings. Kind of the same story, although those thunderstorms stick around a little bit longer over the mountains of Bozeman, and then we'll see, uh, start to see just a very slight chance for some thunderstorms to develop on Friday afternoon. Janelle? All right, thanks so much, Rob. Well, for most dogs and other pets, the 4th of July can be a scary time as fireworks litter the sky for days. MTN Sam Hoyle takes a look at what you can do to help your furry friends. We're almost at the 4th of July, which means a lot of fireworks are going to be popping off in the air over the next handful of days. And while some dogs do pretty well with fireworks, a handful don't. And those loud noises can cause stress on those dogs, making them do a handful of things, one of which is run away trying to seek shelter. Cassidy Cook, Director of Development and Communications for the Lewis and Clark Humane Society, said if your dog does run away and you need to search for it, there are a handful of things that you can do. First steps are to call animal control. Um, they are going to be the ones who can potentially do something about it um, and always, always reach out to the Humane Society and see if anybody has brought your dog in. Um, if we don't answer the phone, you can leave us a voicemail. Uh, we will get back to you. In this day and age, putting out a post on Facebook that says my dog is missing with several pictures of your dog is going to be one of the most helpful things that you can do because it really gets rapid shares. Um, people see it, they share it, they know what the dog looks like, um, and it's just a way quicker way to reach a lot of different people who then have your dog on their radar. Scott Ward has been a dog owner on and off for the last 10 years and said in his opinion if no one's going to be home and there will be fireworks popping off and your dog is afraid of those fireworks sometimes it might just be best to stay home. If you can't have somebody at the house if your dog's afraid of them they comfort them or if they're really skittish uh, your best option may be just take it for a drive until it's all over with. That way you keep them from running off or getting scared. So while there are a couple of things that you can do to search for your dog after they've run away, one of the best preventative measures that Cook mentioned was ensuring that your dog has a collar and a tag on it with all the accurate information that you have. Reporting in Helena, Sam Hoyle, MTN News. All right, thanks so much, Sam. Up next, your latest ag news with another birthday kid, Lane Nordland. Stay with us. Farm and Ranch Report from the Montana Ag Network. Welcome back for today's farm and ranch news. Well, the U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade agreement has been fully implemented, taking the place of the North American Free Trade Agreement, which was negotiated during the Clinton administration. The American Farm Bureau Federation says, given all the challenges U.S. agriculture has faced in recent years, the USMCA couldn't take effect at a better time. 
on the back of a struggling farm economy, on the back of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is welcome news, improving what's been a long and very successful trade agreement for U.S. agriculture. Farmers were excited about USMCA implementation. We had three wins on the trade front last year. When you think about the phase one agreement, USMCA and the Japan-U.S. agreement. So farmers are very excited, especially the wheat producers, dairy producers, poultry producers. They're going to get better and more fair access into the Canadian market. Newton says the agreement gives U.S. farmers and ranchers access to two of America's most important trading partners. Canada and Mexico are our top two trading partners in 2019 in terms of the total economy. And then when you look at agriculture in 2019, again, Canada and Mexico are our top two trading partners. So NAFTA proved to be very good for U.S. producers. And with the improvements that we see in USMCA, it too will be a great agreement for U.S. agricultural producers. The agreement is expected to increase U.S. ag exports by $2 billion and result in a $65 billion increase in gross domestic product. In other news now, in Washington, D.C. this week, bipartisan legislation was introduced to create a new direct-to-consumer option for beef producers, processors, and small meat markets without compromising federal food safety standards or market access under existing trade agreements. The Direct Interstate Retail Exemption for Certain Transaction Act, or DIRECT Act, would amend retail exemptions under current law to allow meat processed under state-inspected establishments to be sold across state lines through e-commerce, providing beef producers and local processors alike with more options to market direct to consumer. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association supports the bill. NCBA President Florida Rancher Marty Smith said that the Direct Act helps make it easier for the American cattle producer to meet the growing demand of the American consumer to purchase safe and delicious U.S. beef. We'll be right back. A USDA released a handful of reports this week, and one of those was the annual acreage report. U.S. wheat acres in the data showed that planted acres of wheat for 2020 are estimated at 44.3 million acres. That's down 2% from 2019, and that also marks the lowest all-wheat planted area since records began in 1919. Winter wheat areas are at 30.6 million acres, down 2% from last year, while spring wheat planting estimates are at 12.2 million acres, down 4%. Here in Montana, winter wheat producers planted 1.55 million acres last fall, compared to 2 million the previous year, and spring wheat seeding was up 100,000 acres to 3 million acres planted. Also on Tuesday, USDA released its grain stocks report. U.S. wheat stocks as of June 1st came in at 1.04 billion bushels. That's about 61 million bushels above trade expectations and down 3% from March, which was 1.08 billion bushels. The bearish side to all of this is that this is the fourth consecutive year of ending stocks tallying more than a billion bushels. That's today's Farm and Ranch News. All right, thanks, Lane. Now come on over to your TV or look closely at your phone screen and check out this amazing creature. This is a sight that makes you say, ah, the San Diego Zoo announced an Ankita that hatched at its safari park for the first time ever. The four month old did some exploring last week. The zoo staff says this little guy moves on its wobbly little legs as it grows and gains strength. Yeah, uh, looks like a cross between a hedgehog and a platypus, doesn't it? Little yes. Bit. Yeah. You nailed it. Yeah, a Just like the forecast. A kid. Okay, I have to remember that. Well, I'm going to try to nail the forecast. That green thing is not a platypus. That is the <laughs> risk for a strong to severe thunderstorm from southwest Montana up toward the high line there in the northeast. Highs this afternoon as warm as the 80s out across the plains. Gusty winds at times with those thunderstorms, Janelle. All right. Thanks so much, Rob. Have a great day, everyone. We will see you tomorrow.